every now and then, in the right place at the right time, we get to see something truly extraordinary. September morning, I was on the trail of rumours I'd heard of a very special occurrence in the heart of the Ogle Hills. An occurrence that's quite rare indeed. Glen Devon. A charming wee glen that cuts through the very centre of the Ogles connecting to its renowned neighbour, Glen Eagles. I parked up at the side of the main road and followed a single track road deeper into the glen. Past the photographer's favourite, the Frandy tree. Some glens are known for whiskey, but this glen is known for its water. The reason is quickly apparent, as you'll soon encounter an oddly well-landscaped wedge of grass amongst the otherwise rough foliage. The many pipes and large spillway quickly give away the secret that hidden under the grass is a dam. I headed up the steep slope, marvelling at the scale of such a thing, and also how they managed to cut the grass on such a steep incline. Peering over the top, millions of litres of water stretched off into the distance in the lower Glen Devon Reservoir. Primarily used to supply drinking water to Fife, it also generates a little electricity too, thanks to a small turbine installed by Scottish Water to help reduce their carbon footprint. I continued my journey along the road, where I was accompanied by another long-legged walker. Now this first reservoir, Lower Glen Devon Reservoir, it's pretty easy to get to. It's only about 10 minutes from the car if you park out in the main road. There's a little fishery down there as well. Um, you can see the fishermen getting ready this morning to go on our boats and do some fly fishing for the day. It feels pretty remote here. Although there's roads and things around over that side, it's just countryside and grass and water. It's lovely. So now I'm just going to continue up this road and head towards something that's not happened since 2003, according to my research, so it's a pretty unique site and looking forward to showing it to you. Let's go. Marching towards the 100 metre tall turbines of the Burnfoot wind farm, I soon found another concrete megalith buried under the grass. Like its sibling, bracing itself against the weight of the water. Or so I would have believed. Millions of litres of water vanished. The dam now presiding over desolate mudflats. The enormous spillway lay empty after the second driest summer in 160 years has left the reservoir drained and depleted, revealing the strange structures that are normally confined to the depths. But there was still more to be seen. I finally arrived at Upper Glen Devon Reservoir, 
and as you can see things look a little bit peculiar here today. Behind me here is the actual dam. Now this isn't the downstream face. I'm actually standing in the reservoir. Water would usually be far, far above my head here. Now don't let its appearance fool you. This dam is a bit of a troublemaker. It was originally built in 1955, but it had to be repaired several times over the years because it kept springing leaks. Eventually, they decided to do something a little more permanent. On the other side of the dam, they dumped 280,000 cubic metres of rock that was quarried from several sites around uh, the River Devon here and dumped it all on the other side in layers and that's now that grassy slope that you can see on the other side here today. Now, although the low water levels and being able to stand at the bottom of the dam was pretty cool, there's something else I want to show you. Something that's particular to this reservoir. I headed out into the mud. This is just surreal. I've never, never seen anything like this before. Spectacular in a kind of post-apocalyptic way. The landscape felt like that of another world. The strange patterns etched into the surface of the drying mud were mesmerising. While underfoot, the slightly moist mud wobbled like jelly. The sides of the reservoir where the water once rested, now resembling a map with their own natural contour lines engraved into the earth, while the unrelenting force of life meanders its way ever deeper into the cracks, reclaiming these lost and forgotten lands. At last, I had finally found what I had come here to explore, the ruins of an old farmhouse just a short distance away. But getting to it would be harder than I thought. A small river stood in my way. This innocent little trickle of water was flanked by deep, almost quicksand-like mud. After sticking my leg in up to my knee, I decided to head upstream and find a rock to hop across instead. Finally, the farmhouse up close. Previously known as Black Hill Farm. It has been 66 years since it was sacrificed to make way for the reservoir only occasionally showing its head above water. But don't worry, the occupants were not inside at the time. A new farm was built for them, higher up the hill. According to Scottish Water, it's thought to have been 18 years since people could last walk amongst these ruins. The remnants of the old chimney now toppled and broken. I was surprised at how well the old building had held together, with wood still visible above the windows and the bricks looking like new. A beautiful, yet strange landscape, moulded by human hands. Well, that's the farmhouse folks. Submerged in 1955 when this reservoir was built. It's just incredible to think that was the last time people used to live here and work. 
Now, one tip I'll have if you want to come and visit this place is be very careful on the little rivers that flow down into the reservoir. There's some very deep mud next to them and as you can see, I found it the hard way. So thanks everybody for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye for now.